Well, welcome back to another episode of uh, Carolina Cars. We are back in the shop looking at some uh, idling issues on the 1980 Saab 900. Uh, basically, when it's cold, it just uh, runs like garbage. <laughs> and as it warms up, it gets um, to be running a little bit better, but there still is a little bit of hesitation. I'd already changed the spark plugs and checked the gap, uh, and also did the distributor cap, which didn't really seem to change too much. I think it's a fueling problem, and it's actually gotten a little bit worse, so uh, it might be this warm-up regulator here. Um, we're going to have to do some tests um, with the uh, actual fuel injection systems. This is the uh, CIS, or K-Jetronic, uh, that's a later name for it, would be in these cars. Um, and these are uh, lines that go off to the um, uh, injectors here on the cylinder head, our intake manifold, and then uh, there's an input line and an output line from the uh, fuel tank, and then some other lines that go to like a cold start injector is this one. And these two lines go to the warm-up regulator, which uh, controls the pressure. Kind of complicated to explain. Um, but the first thing I want to do is this gets engine heat and basically adjusts the uh, fuel uh, pressures in the system. Um, so I wanted to check to make sure it was getting power, which you do have to start the car before it will give you power. Um, but it is getting power. And also there's a little jack down here where there's an internal resistor which um, controls like a bimetallic strip um, that helps regulate the... Uh, warm-up cycle. I wanted to see if that resistor was blown out. It's reading 49 ohms, so I don't think so. Not quite sure what the ohm spec on this is. There may not have been one, so um, do a little bit more digging on that. I saw somewhere 18 to 22, but as long as it's um, got some resistance, it's probably fine. You really need to open it up, I think. And then the resistance value should be stamped inside of it, so we'd have to try to take it apart. Not ready to do that yet. i got to do some other checks before that. It seems like the resistor is working. It's getting power, so there may be some other issues with the system. Next thing I'd like to do is I'm probably going to pull this uh, output line off the fuel filter out of that, which goes to the uh, fuel distributor here. And then I'm going to see if I'm getting enough flow. Um, out of the fuel pump and uh, do that test and then go from there. Alright, so we did a flow test. Um, I was going to try to bridge these fuses, but that didn't really work so well. I just ended up starting the engine with a return line um, disconnected and there's a little adapter that I got from my fuel pressure kit and then ran that into a oil bottle. And it's over 900 cc's, which was the output um, for in 30 seconds for what the manual uh, stated. So it looks like we don't have a fuel flow problem. I'm going to have to go ahead and do some more tests now on the warm-up regulator uh, to see if that is the issue. Okay, so we have the gauges running, or connected. Um, the output is going out of the top of the fuel pressure regulator. I think I thought it was somewhere else, but I was actually wrong. It's a weak one. It has a little bit of fuel, but I don't have to really worry about. Uh, then it goes up, out of that into the T, where it's pressure off to the fuel pressure gauge there, and then it goes into the input side of the uh, warm-up regulator, which is over here. Currently, it looks like we are within spec um, on a relatively warm engine. We're at about 50 psi. Um, that being said, uh, when we do flip the uh, valve to the control pressure, rather the line pressure, the system pressure, that's running a bit low. I don't quite know what that means. It could be another issue within the system. Continue to warm this up uh, completely, and we'll take a look at the pressures once we get totally warmed up. Okay, so um, back 
and I'm going to see if we can uh, fire this up again and just do a uh, pressure test from cold. Um, right now we're at about 45 degrees in the garage. Or a regulator sitting at about 47. Change the adapters around a little bit, so hopefully no leaks. Uh, we'll see. So I'm going to start it up and uh, it's going to go with the pressure uh, right from the uh, the get go here, and then take the temperatures uh, at the warm up regulator as we're warming up. Okay, so I've done a few test runs uh, since the last clip, and the warm up regulator, the, the control pressure. Is looking pretty good. Um, the last one I did, it was about 35 degrees on the warm-up regulator um, from that uh, infrared temp uh, gun that I was using. And we started out around 1.2 bar, about 14 PSI, 15 PSI or so. And as it warmed up, it gradually went up to um, you know, three and a half bar and uh, 50 PSI that is in spec, um, according to the uh, information that I have. Um, so I think the warm-up regulator is good. Um, one thing, though, that is not in spec is that system pressure, or the line pressure, as they say, uh, that goes into the uh, fuel distributor. Uh, that should be around 5.5 bar, 5.4 to 5.6. Um, so like around 77 to 80 PSI. Like up here on the gauge, it's more like down here, um, 4.8 or uh, a little bit lower than that. Like just below that 70 PSI marker, 4.8 bar. So I think um, that system, the system pressure there is a little low. Um, so what I'm going to have to do is I actually uh, took the uh, regulator out that regulates that system pressure, which goes right where I, I plugged it with some paper towels, and uh, I'm going to have to shim that. So uh, I'm going to do another update, um, and then I'll show you the process to doing that um, as well. Uh, so that'll be a separate video. Just another um, quick description of the system that I used to test this because it was kind of hard to see in the last uh, clip. Uh, but basically you have this um, fitting which comes off the top of the fuel distributor and that goes to the warm-up regulator which I kind of messed up in one of the earlier clips and then I think I posted a little text where it was like, oops. So that comes out of it, uh, it goes out of this line into this T, which goes into the uh, fuel gauge, uh, the pressure gauge. And this actually has a quick disconnect that pops up. There's a check valve, um, and then that goes into the uh, warm-up regulator. Um, in this particular make and model, the uh, input is on the, you know, the front forward side of the car, and then the output goes back down the line. And then goes back in. I think it's uh, it's kind of hard to see, but it's over uh, right about in in the ears. Yeah, I think it's that one right there that I'm pointing at. So um, those two are where it goes. But basically, you want to you know connect your gauge um, to the line that comes off of this. You can either connect it you know to the line that comes off of there, and then. You know, connect the other end um, to this point, or you can just connect it directly to the warm-up regulator input side. Um, so you're going to have the check valve towards the um, warm-up regulator and not towards the fuel distributor side. So then when you flip it, you get the system pressure, and when you release it, you get the um, control pressure, which is actually what the Form of regulator is uh, you know, doing to control the piston uh, the system inside of the uh, piston and diaphragm or piston and diaphragm I should say inside of the uh, the fuel distributor. So that's just a quick overview of what I did uh, on this particular car. Every car is a little bit different, but it has kind of the same uh, idea behind how to. Uh, uh, wire or to uh, hook up that fuel gauge, um, the fuel pressure gauge. So a few of the things I should be testing or might test if um, the uh, fuel pressure fix doesn't work, which I'm thinking it might not. Um, this is an auxiliary air valve here, which controls air that goes into the engine when it's idling um, and that, that warms up as it goes. 
Uh, there's something down here, I think, which is something to do with the oxygen sensor. I think they call it a frequency valve. I'll have to look more into that, but that uh, connects to the fuel distributor as well. So I'm going to have to do some checks on that, and then maybe more checks on the ignition system uh, as well. Uh, so we'll see. Um, so just uh, some further updates coming. So uh, stay tuned as we continue to uh, go a little bit deeper into... Um, the uh, systems here on the uh, 1980 Saab 900. Thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you soon in the next one.